Welcome back to Grid Drop. Uh, today we're here with some more Assetto Corsa. Sort of a disclaimer, this is not part of the official, um, I guess, championship season that we're doing in Assetto Corsa. Kind of just a one-off video I'm going to do. Uh, just kind of a last to whatever place I get kind of kind of challenge, I guess. Um, starting 25th out of 25 cars and just see where I end up. Uh, but we're racing around uh, Zolder in, in Belgium. That track is not officially on our championship track list, so um, I just recently learned this track and it's an absolute blast to race around here, so I figured I'd uh, just put it on the channel, kind of a one-off video, and just, you know, see how it goes. So, no practice, no qualifying, just getting straight into the race. Uh, you can see on the top bit of your screen right there, 30-minute race, uh, pretty much exactly what I do for all the races on our championship um, kind of season we have going on. You can see on the top left as well, 25 out of 25, so starting last place, doing a little bit of a burnout right there. Um, but overall, I've done some practice laps around here, obviously, like I said, I did just learn the track, so fair warning, I might make a couple mistakes, but it's really a blast to drive around here, so I wanted to record. Uh, but the Audi is really well balanced around here, um, so hopefully that will limit some of the mistakes. But uh, onto the race, and we are racing in Zolder. Pretty, pretty good start. Uh, instantly grabbing that NSX up the inside, racing up the inside as well, lunging, late braking into turn one. Uh, up alongside this GTR. Unfortunately, I have to back out of that. We're going to get too squeezed to the inside curb there, and that probably would have uh, caused an incident. So we're going to back out of that, lunge up the inside again, and that should be that place taken away from that GTR. So a couple places right off the start, which is obviously always really good to see. Hopefully we can get this Ferrari now into turn five, I believe. Uh, lunging, late braking again, using the inside. It's barely touching the curbs. It's kind of a slanted curb. Don't want to take too much there and uh, lose kind of the uh, stability of this car. But that's the Ferrari gone. AI brake really, really early into this corner, so hopefully you can grab this Lamborghini up the inside as well. And that is another move done. And it looks like we're gonna grab this one, we're gonna keep it as well. So now stuck behind these two Audis in front. Kind of gonna be a sketchy move going into this corner. Have to brake probably earlier than I would normally. Um, yeah, braking pretty much right around the corner right there. Uh, letting these two guys go side by side through here, battle it out, and hopefully they're gonna slow each other down enough and I can just pick them off one by one, but pretty good start to the race so far. Um, I don't, I'm going to be honest, I don't know the where the sectors start and end and the, and the uh, numbers of each corner, so I'm not going to pretend like I know, but up the inside now into a, a corner, one of them, uh, towards the end of the lap, uh, using a little bit of the inside curve here, try to get just a better straight line speed, using the slipstream of this Ferrari a little bit, hopefully go for a move again up the inside. Really liking the, the dive bombs up the inside today. And that is yet another place taken off of uh, one of these other drivers. So pretty great start. And 16th now crossing the line. And that's a lot of places. Nine places gained on lap one. So um, obviously top eight are point scores. So hopefully we can get somewhere in there. Going a little bit wide into turn one. Not really hitting the apex or, or really using the exit curve there. So definitely going to nail that line more in the future if I want to gain time. But luckily this pack is still pretty closed up ahead so I wouldn't be uh, too surprised if we could go for another move pretty soon. I do notice that this corner um, I break very early and then carry the speed through the corner, take a wider line, use the exit curb, um, and I gain time compared to the cars in front. So we can get into that a little bit more uh, once the race carries on. But right now looking potentially up the inside of the Audi, unfortunately he moves to the left a little bit too late uh, just towards the end of the braking zone so I can't really go for anything there. Kind of kills my momentum. And now I'm sort of on the back foot trying to catch up to him through this uh, downhill left-hander into this chicane here. So hopefully we can make up some time in the braking zone, which it looks like we do. We're right on the tail of this R8 in front of us. So that's looking like another place that we gain up uh, a lot of time in the braking zones compared to the AI. So um, definitely a couple braking zones that I can pick and choose from. Uh, there's some that are better for overtaking and some that are better just for late braking, really jamming the brakes, and then gaining as much time as I possibly can. So. Uh, still going to pick and choose exactly where I want to make these overtakes and exactly where I want to just gain time. Um, obviously, if I'm really close behind a car, I'm going to go for the dive bomb, as we saw in lap one. But um, yeah, lap two coming to an end now. Unfortunately, couldn't pick up any places, but it looks like this R8 and this Mercedes are going to be fighting in front of us, going side by side through turn one. So hopefully that means we can go for a move sometime soon, getting a much better run through turn one this time around. Clearly, compared to these guys in front, a much better run. Really nowhere else to go, have to go up the middle of the two cars, still fighting the Mercedes around the outside, and luckily we have just a little bit better traction, put the power down, and it looks like that's job done. 
So that was a pretty sketchy move around turn two, going up the up the uh, inside of the Audi and around the outside of that Mercedes. But like I said, didn't really have anywhere else to go. So otherwise, we would have had to just back out of that move, let those two fight it out, and, and then go for something. So pretty aggressive, pretty opportunistic, but luckily it worked out. There could have been a little bit of contact with, with the Mercedes uh, right there. It doesn't really show it from this angle. So we'll see from a different angle. We'll see an aerial view here. If there was a little bit of contact, I think he might have just taken a little bit too much curb and kind of kicked out onto the racing line. And it looks like that's pretty much what happened. So I don't really think I was at fault for the contact there, but that was a very sketchy move going up the uh, the middle of those two guys in front. But like I said, I, uh, I was pretty, pretty aggressive, pretty opportunistic. Otherwise, I would have had to just back out, wait for those guys to, uh, to battle it out with each other, and then go for moves into uh, probably into the chicane, which we are now approaching uh, following this GTR. So you can see that the pack is bunched up a little bit in front. Uh, this GTR is kind of a straggler, so hopefully we can go for a move into turn, uh, what is this, turn four, turn five. Um, looking like we're going to be a little bit far back, but we're going to go for it really, really late breaking into the chicane. Very aggressive move, uh, really, really squeezing him out to the uh, outside curve of the chicane there. That was an aggressive move, so that's two in a row. Back-to-back uh, -back laps where really, really pushing the, uh, pushing the envelope on these overtakes. But you can see in the top left as well, a second and a half positive on our Delta for a fast lap. So even with a pretty aggressive overtake, we're just hitting the lines very nicely, hitting the braking zones correctly, and uh, we're on a couple flyers. But as I was saying before we passed that GTR, the pack up ahead is uh, you know, pretty far in front, but they seem to be pretty uh, you know condensed, uh, pretty close together. So. If we can catch up to this, uh, I believe it's a Lamborghini uh, in the, in the you know, holding up the rear of this pack in front, but if we can catch up to them pretty soon, we should be able to go for a couple quick, uh, you know, rapid fire overtakes and just knock this whole line of cars out of the way. So hopefully that's coming up pretty soon. But um, overall, this car feels really, really good around this track. The hardest thing, um, I believe the most technical part of this circuit is this part of the track right here. Turns one, two, and three are very, um, sensitive for the throttle um, it's very easy to take too much curb and sort of unbalance yourself uh, and it kind of throws you off the racing line it can push you wide uh, and then obviously on the outside past that thin outside curb is just gravel um, you can see going a little bit too wide on that outside curb right there and, and taking up some of that gravel but uh, yeah going too wide here is very treacherous so uh, that's probably one of the most technical parts of this track breaking really really late into the chicane and that's how we're going to make up time to these guys in front. So you can see that put us uh, green in the delta just from that braking zone. Going to break really, really late here into the chicane as well. We can see how much time we're making up to this, this uh, pack of cars in front just by really, really jamming the brakes, braking late, and uh, just keeping it under control. It's, it's hard to, uh, to judge exactly when, when is too late, but uh, that was a pretty good, pretty good showing of, uh, of good judgment in the braking zone. So another angle of us really, really, really late on the brakes. And that brings us right behind this Lamborghini. So hopefully we can potentially go for a move into turn one. I think we're a little bit too far back to go for a move uh, right here. But maybe something into turn one. Um, we'll have to see. But overall, this car feels incredibly balanced. Um, like I was talking about through turn, th like the, the first, you know, turn one, two, and three. Um, it, it's really, really a joy to drive this car. It feels really balanced. I was driving a Porsche uh, around here earlier, and it was just so understeery. So... The, the setup of this car and the way this car handles is really, really, uh, really important. So I'm going to take you through sort of my thought process here. Um, this corner coming up, I believe this is turn three or four. Um, I'm braking really early there. So you can see the tire marks um, are a little bit past where I first hit the brakes. And that is a pretty good indication of where you should be braking um, around those tire marks. So I'm braking before those. And then I sort of stick it to the inside curb and then put the power down probably right before I hit the apex. Um, and then that gives me sort of a wider run through that corner and then I can put the power down sooner compared to the AI and then I'm sort of just in a better position for that small straight. So it, it gives me better straight line uh, speed just from the corner exit. So I, I believe that's why I can gain so much time compared to the AI. But um, that is probably one of the most important corners um, on this track I've noticed in terms of just gaining lap time. So um, I thought I'd kind of share exactly what I was doing. Um, but looks like we're gonna go for a move up the inside of the Lamborghini, just a little bit too far back. He's still side by side. He's starting to pull away a little bit. Going to be a drag race now onto this back straight, the straight right before the main straight. And it looks like we can maybe go for a move around the outside. He's still hugging the inside brake pretty late. And we're going to actually go for the switch back here, see if he bites and he doesn't really fall for that. So 
onto the main straight now. Really, really in, in, uh, in this Lamborghini slipstream. Can definitely go for a move here. Going to switch to the inside now. Hopefully we can go for a move into turn one. Going to be late on the brakes. Try to lunge past him a little bit. And we break pretty much evenly. So he was late on the brakes. Luckily I have the inside. I can take that apex. He's getting squeezed out to the outside curb. Going to give him plenty of room just to make sure we don't run him off the track. And we are side by side through turn two. Very similar to what happened with that Mercedes. And turn two looks like the spot where we can just out traction these cars to our inside. So that is another overtake around turn two. And that was a very, a very pretty one. So, man, that was some good racing with that Lamborghini. That was about half a lap of racing. And that was, that was fantastic. But um, into this uh, chicane now. Hopefully we can make up some time, catch these guys in front. That chicane is pretty easy to just cut the corners. Um, and uh, like I said before, the curves are pretty forgiving here. So um, at least at least you can cut the corners, gain a little bit of time. You can see the gap has already opened up slightly to that Lamborghini behind, about 0.7 seconds away. So really gained a lot of time through that chicane. And uh, starting to feel pretty consistent um, around this track. I feel like I'm gaining rather quickly on cars in front, and I'm leaving the guys behind in the dust. So overtakes have been, have been pretty easy, obviously. Mostly just hard braking zones. Uh, taking a little bit too much curve. Having a little bit of oversteer right there. But uh, yeah, mostly just hard braking zones for giving curves, so it's not really too difficult to overtake um, around this track. It is kind of interesting that you know tur tur turns one, two, and three uh, are probably the hardest spots to overtake just based on uh, you know the proximity of the gravel to the track. And then also that the curbs are, are slanted, they're pretty harsh, so um, I'm surprised I've been able to make, what is it, three or four overtakes now through uh, turn one, two, and three, so that's, you know, pretty, uh, pretty impressed myself there, but uh, pretty much reaching the halfway point, the halfway point, I should say, of, uh, of this race now. Keeping, uh, keeping it clean, I'm feeling very confident, the car feels balanced, I'm, I'm consistently gaining, consistently closing the gaps, um, I'm just really... I, I can really tell where I'm gaining time. So this this corner, uh, unfortunately, a little bit of a shaky run through there, but uh, just breaking early and then getting the power down sooner on the straight is really helping me out. Also, breaking really late into the chicane. The AI seemed to break. You can see here, that was a pretty good example of it. They break really, really early. Um, they break just before the 100 meter board, I believe, and I'm breaking probably a couple meters after it. So um, luckily we can gain some time through there. Unfortunately, I had a little bit, a bit of a bumpy run through there that time around, but. Gain some time through this chicane as well. We make contact with the Audi and we're off into the gravel. Huge mistake. There were, we lose, what, one or two places there. And that is a terrible, terrible mistake. Just had kind of a bad, bumpy run through that chicane, taking a little bit too much curve. I keep talking about how forgiving the curves are here and unfortunately have a, a little bit of a bump. And uh, just go wide through that first one. Hit the sausage curves on the inside of that second half of that chicane. Make a little bit of contact with that Audi. Unfortunately, it was already unstable just from bumping along those sausage curves, and that's a pretty unfortunate mistake that I, uh, I just went off the track there. Luckily, only two positions lost, you can see from that replay. Uh, so we're back down to 14th place, 12 minutes remaining. Luckily, there's a, a good amount of time left to, to catch up, but that is really going to make it a struggle to get into the top eight. That was sort of my goal at the beginning of this, of this race, and that was looking very attainable uh, before we were in P12 with uh, a big group of cars in front of us. So that was looking like a pretty good bet, but now we're really gonna have to push. So gonna have to go for a couple fast laps now. We'll see if we can get anywhere close back to the top eight. Obviously, P14 is you know six places away. Taking a lot of exit curve there. That was pretty sketchy. Just a couple more inches would have been off onto the grass and pretty much subsequently into the gravel, but uh, just gotta keep it tidy, avoid mistakes. It's very easy to feel under pressure and start really, really pushing too hard and making some mistakes once you uh, have, a, have a big off like that. But uh, catching up a little bit now on lap 11, um, still P14 obviously. You can see the, the pack of cars in front has gotten a little bit closer. I believe there is some battling in front, so that's backing them up into me, which is pretty much exactly what I need at this point if I want to get close to the top eight again. But um, yeah, that was a pretty, pretty tragic mistake uh, going off onto the gravel there. But we have shown pretty solid pace throughout this race, so I'm not really too concerned that we're uh, so far back from these guys. Obviously, gonna have to uh, put our heads down and you know keep keep trucking along and make sure we can close this gap. But um, 10 minutes remaining. Unfortunately, have kind of bad run through that corner. Have to downshift. It is pretty easy um, to be a little bit too trusting of the throttle and sort of understeer into uh, into the gravel right there, or at least onto the exit curb, which is pretty pretty close to the gravel. So. Um, 
yeah, it's it's just a little it's a little easy to make a mistake right there. But luckily we can avoid it by downshifting. Unfortunately, it just kind of kills your momentum onto that straight. So um, not the greatest not the greatest run um, on that lap, but have been consistently catching. Um, you can see a little bit closer. Obviously, still much too far back to think about going for any type of move. Um, just you know, not not close enough yet. But the pack does to be bunched up pretty pretty well in front, um, which is good for me. I, there could be people kind of battling. I'm not really too sure. Uh, but it looks like there's a pack of about f two cars and then a pack of maybe three or four um, ahead of them. So if, uh, if there is any battling in front, we could definitely catch up. If not, I think we have the pace just to definitely at least get this Audi in front. You can see on lap 13 now getting a good run through turn one and uh, positive, or uh, I should say green in the Delta. I don't really know if it's technically positive or negative. I don't know the right term, but um, definitely good run through turns one and two so far. Turn three is looking pretty solid so far. Hopefully into turn four we can get a good run and uh, maybe go for something into this, uh, not this first chicane coming up, but potentially the one after where we made that mistake. So potentially a little bit of redemption. We're going to be very careful going into that chicane now. Um, make sure we hit the braking zone and don't get knocked loose by the sausage curves. That really is what killed us last time and sent us into the gravel. So the AI break really, really early into this corner. So it looks like we're pretty far back right now, but I'm sure once the braking zone is is finished, we're gonna be pretty close. You can see what I'm talking about there. We get really close to this Audi behind. He's still braking through the chicane. We make a little bit of contact with him. Very similar situation to what happened uh, a couple laps ago when we got sent into the gravel. So luckily it was a different outcome this time around. But Audi's point of view here, you can see we're pretty far back, but we could probably go for a lunge into this hairpin. It looks like we're gonna we're gonna send it, and we're taking up a lot of the inside curve onto the onto the dirt there. And it's a very similar situation to what happened with that Lamborghini. Luckily this time we should have a better run, use uh, a little bit of that curb and the dirt to uh, make sure we don't get squeezed too far to the inside. And that looks like that's job done. So, man, very crazy race so far. It's been a lot of a lot of overtaking, but about eight minutes left lap. Eight minutes left in the race uh, on lap 14 onto the main straight into turn one um, and these guys in, in front are pretty close so if we can get a good run through through uh, sector one uh, I'm not really exactly too sure when sector one starts and or sorry when sector one ends I don't don't know this track that well uh, but if we get a good run through sector one wherever sector one ends uh, we should be pretty close to these guys into that chicane um, again so hopefully Oh man, hopefully we can get these guys. Um, not really too much time remaining, so if we make a mistake going for one of these overtakes, it's probably going to be game over in terms of points, but making up a lot of time into the chicane yet again, um, it's pretty much a guarantee that I'm going to make up some time compared to the guys in front. Uh, even closer this time around, or probably uh, equidistant to the Audi last lap, uh, going to gain a lot of time, really, really sending it on the brakes. That's a very risky overtake. Uh, I was not slowing down at all for that chicane. That was very very sketchy you see cars ahead going taking to the dirt to try to uh try to stick to the inside battling it out we can definitely go for a move on this porsche potentially even the gtr really late lunge into the hairpin again and this is even more overtaking into the hairpin and that is two cars in one huge moment of oversteer after uh hopping off that curb and that is two in one and one right before it so that's three overtakes in probably one sector that is really really aggressive we're really starting to push it now uh, six minutes left in the race now, Audi in front, there's two cars in front of him, so we could potentially be in the points if we can get these three. Here's a replay now of that move into the hairpin. That was a really, really, really late lunch. Taking to the dirt, you can see the oversteer just uh, popping those rear tires uh, once we get onto the asphalt off that curb, but that was really, really aggressive. Those last three overtakes have been quite, uh, quite risky, I, I should say, so... Um, yeah, like I said, there's a couple cars in front, so we could technically be looking at points. Uh, we're going to have to get them pretty quick. Six minutes left uh, on lap 15 now. Going to need a couple uh, bangers uh, for laps here. Definitely going to need to catch up. I need to at least get one of these guys this lap, uh, probably. That gives us about a minute per car, um, to, or sorry, a lap per car to overtake. Um, six minutes left in the race, uh, probably three or four laps remaining three cars in front to get to the point so um, yeah it's gonna be tight we're definitely gonna need to try to get one of these guys in front hopefully they can start battling it out um, but I don't know this is we're gonna have to see so this is just kind of my thought process of uh, what's going on in this race luckily they do start fighting out they're going side by side through this chicane and that's gonna really open the door for me this Ferrari is gonna be easy pickings I don't even have to overtake him in a breaking zone he's just he's just already behind me 
Braking early, making sure the uh, the Audi is not going to make any contact with me. The Ferrari is looking up the inside, and luckily we can uh, squeeze him out just enough. Close the door just in time, and that is him to not worry about any longer. So, um, unfortunately, that did kind of let the Audi run away a little bit, uh, but we're going to have to we're going to have to catch up with him. So you can see a pretty massive train of cars behind me. Um, luckily, I'm not slowing them down, but you see the GTR and the Ferrari fighting behind, so they're going to slow down the rest of the field. Um, and this R8 is sort of starting to slip away. Um, I unfortunately, just lost a lot of my, my momentum um, overtaking that Ferrari on the curbs. And uh, I had to close the door pretty aggressively, kind of compromise my line to the rest of the chicane. Um, I just braked a little bit too early, so that, that's completely on, on me. Uh, but unfortunately, the Audi is just sort of slipping away. Um, just looks to be better pace. So on the last lap now, unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to be points. We're going to be in the points, I should say, unless this Audi or someone else in front makes a huge mistake and we can pass them. Um, but it, just based on raw pace, I don't think we're going to be finishing top eight. Um, so yeah, kind of unfortunate, but pretty crazy race. Um, like I said at the beginning, um, I just recently learned this track like the past couple days. Um, and it's just been a blast racing around here, so I figured I'd, um, you know, I figured I'd record it. Um, again, not really part of the whole a set of course a championship thing we got going on um but yeah overall really really fun track it's it's very you know it's a skinny track there's not really too much um too much to play with in terms of track limits um obviously everything is gravel or grass besides the uh, beyond the exit curves i should say so um pretty pretty rewarding to be using the track limits to the extent without going without going further so i'd say it's a pretty technical track um we had some pretty good racing um, around turns one, two, and three. Luckily, that's the widest point of the track, so we could, you know, be side by side with with other cars and have it uh, just be good racing. So, um, yeah. So it looks like it's going to be going to be P9. Unfortunate, couldn't get it to the points, but that's you know, it is what it is. It had that pretty huge mistake. We were probably looking at um, probably looking at P6 around there if we didn't have that mistake. But uh, yeah, across the line pretty good race can't really can't really complain at what is that 16 16 overtakes um starting from last in the grid um and having that huge mistake we lost about five i think five or six seconds um from that mistake that was what the delta said at least so um five or six seconds in, in race time but um probably a lot more in terms of result uh just based on how close the cars were in front of us when we made that mistake so um, yeah, so that's that's gonna do it. If you uh, made it this far, thank you. I appreciate it for watching. I know the commentary is pretty bad. Let me know what you think about this kind of style. I was kind of just talking a little bit more uh, relaxed, just kind of taking taking you through my thought process, um, especially like around corners, uh, braking zones, stuff like that. I guess it might just be a little bit more informative. So um, yeah, kind of an unfortunate unfortunate mistake, kind of ruined the race, but overall pretty good result. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one.